This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. Hello, this is Chandler Rose, and I'm working with the lovely Myra again. And I just worked on her legs to address some low back tension, specifically on one side. And then I worked on both sides just to give her a little more evenness and stretch in the body. Just to continue on with the idea of addressing the body holistically, I recommend massaging the entire body on a, a massage table or mat. Make sure your feet are nice and elevated and you have a comfortable space. So as we're setting a space here to make sure Myra is more comfortable and for you at home, we have a yoga mat rolled up and this adorable little puppy Stella to help comfort as we work. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you haven't already, follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. So just as we're setting the space, it's good to just start with a few slow, deep breaths. Every time I start a new session or another section of a session, I like to calm my own breathing, shift gears to relaxation mode, and just gently grounding my hands on her hair making contact before we work deeper into these muscular stru structures that help us so much with work and play and everything in between. And I'm just going to slowly apply pressure down her back get a good idea of where her ribs are, where her sacrum is, and just notice. Notice if there is more tension on one side of the back than the other. Sometimes you can even visually see that one side is more raised than the other. We just worked on the areas that can cause disturbances around the sciatic area. So that is a great video to check out if you're right now feeling some low back pain. You can also watch this video first. They don't have to go in order. If you're someone that loves a back massage more than the legs getting worked on. For this portion, I'm going to use a little apricot seed oil. Any seed oils are generally hypoallergenic. They're also small molecule oils, which really help polish, tone, and moisturize the skin. And I like to think of Athena Jezik sometimes when I'm working because she has so much wisdom that she's accumulated over her years of working. And something I like to think about is with pressure, when you start off, less is more. So there's a way to apply pressure with a very calm intention and still have a sturdy and comforting touch without going in too aggressively at the beginning. 
which will allow her parasympathetic system and other systems to support deeper relaxation. This also allows us to go deeper into the tissues without feeling her push against the work that we are about to work on, engage in. So first, I'd like to address this area in her left shoulder. And in our last video, we were working on the left low back. So I do feel that there's a relationship here with where her rib cage is. So just over this dense area, these muscles are stacked and some of them, one layer at least, that you can access easily are the rhomboids. And I think they're called that because of the shape. And if you can recall geometry, there's a shape called the rhombus. And that is a similar shape to these sections here. If you're interested in anatomy or working on your own body, which I find very valuable, you can look up The Trail Guide to the Body. It's a book that will show you pictures of all the muscles and structures inside the body. And it's actually a coloring book, which is really fun and interactive and an easy way to take in the information. Or maybe you're teaching a child about anatomy. And that's kind of a fun way to get them to visualize all these amazing structures inside. So again, these areas just in between the shoulder blades, people like to say. You can apply a deeper thumb pressure if that feels good and your joints and your thumbs are strong. If that feels too difficult for your hands, maybe you're someone that works on a computer a lot, you can come in with a loamy type posture that involves more of the forearm and the tools, which I talk in depth about in my Lomi Lomi series. And just make sure on these ribs, so you have the muscles and then below the muscles you have the ribs, that you don't go too deep, too fast. Myra and I have an understanding around what pressure she likes, but she is also welcome to give me feedback at any time. And so if you are working on someone or yourself at home, really get comfortable with listening. Feedback is good and is not criticism. It's just feedback. And the body will also give you feedback naturally by its own subtle gestures and movements. So sometimes when you work on a deep area, you might notice your person's hands clenching up. You might notice some movement in their feet you might notice a healthy person engaged in a deep breath, signaling you that they're working through something and also a good indication that maybe you wanna hold that but not go deeper. 
and all these subtleties will help you and the person receiving to feel supported, to feel more relaxed. The important part of massage, or one important part, is simply receiving. And then on a cool, scientific, anatomical level, there's all this change that you're helping with too. People, probably nine out of 10 at least, will say, work between my shoulder blades. And this is the area we're working on. And I like to think that, number one, that's where this sort of shell of us exists. And this shell can kind of become more and more tense over time with the stresses of daily life and deep caring about what it is you're involved in. And so massage is a good way to help you feel your shell and also help you soften and work into that layer that has been protecting you. And this is why most people want their backs worked on first, because once the shell is open, there's this new vulnerability, and then this new concept of what else am I feeling in my body? So it's okay to make the back the priority in your massage, but I encourage all of you to massage other areas. It's kind of like with diet, like have you tried a new vegetable today? Have you taken in other nutrients that your body might need but doesn't know it needs? So with massage, any area of the body that feels comfortable is a good place to start working on more parts of you. And also when you're working on people, it can feel overwhelming for you if there's so much going on. Sometimes I hear people say they don't enjoy working on their partner because that person is so tight <laughs> and so they'd rather buy a gift certificate for a massage than do it themselves which is okay massage is hard work too but there are ways to make it easy and you can just start with one thing you know maybe it's between the shoulder blades and that's what we're doing I'm just going in with my thumbs raking through these tissues. I am also addressing the lower trapezius, which a lot of people don't really think about because they're thinking about their upper trapezius, which are the muscles that roll over like a scroll. So the trapezius, the rhomboids, levator, these are muscles that help to raise or elevate the scapula or the shoulder blade and rotate a little bit. And those muscles are connected here and then they sort of ribbon twist up into the neck here. So even just working on someone and helping them visualize what it is is going on and you can help them visualize it by palpating or touching that area. You know, people will ask me a lot, am I tighter than everybody else? I think we all like to think that our tension is bigger or the biggest. <laughs> 
but I think all humans have a certain amount of tension. And there are people, there are, there are people that are extra, extra tight. And maybe that's you. So I would encourage at least, at the very least, getting a therapy ball or a yoga block or something to lay on because that's a good start to at least feeling what's going on in your back. And we have videos on that as well. So I'm just noticing now that her back is starting to relax. She's getting some new space in between her shoulder blades. And I can do a couple techniques that are called cross fiber friction, which means I'm going across the fibers. It's common for that to feel a little uh, blippy, I like to say. That's my massage term. But people come up with all sorts of things like knots or trigger points, or which is actually a scientific term. But a lot of it means the same thing, which is points of congestion, common points of congestion. So now that I have her mid left side real open, I'm gonna go back up towards that corner of the trapezius where it connects into that shoulder corner. Here is the deltoid. And I'm just gonna take my finger and thumb and do this pincer palpation technique and pinch. This is a common area of tension that can cause headaches or neck tension. And this is one that you can do on yourself with your opposite hand. You can sort of grab and pull up towards the shoulder and it will feel tender. Those always do, even when they're not super tight. And I'm just gonna rake my fingers. And this might not look like much, but raking the fingers into the anterior neck, which I know is probably hard to see, but I'm basically just letting my hand be relaxed and pulling through towards the diagonal back corner of the room. Just using my weight. And like I said, this may look like it's gentle, but it's actually quite strong. Most people are not used to having the anterior neck worked on, and so a little goes a long way. So always check. You can ask, is this your optimal pressure? That's a really nice way to ask. Would you like more pressure? Would you like less pressure? Sometimes you have a person, even someone you know, that just says it's fine. I would very politely not accept that answer and encourage more information than it being fine. <clears throat> you want it to feel perfect. Not that anything is really perfect, but massage can feel perfect in moments at least. And I'm just gonna take both hands, give her a little squeeze into her spinous processes. So you have these bones that kind of come out like a T and they're a lot more complicated than that because you have nerves running through them and channels. But if you think about them like these little T's coming out, what you can do is very gently squeeze in towards those cervicals and what you're accessing here is all the neck muscles that connect into the cervical spine and every therapist and every body worker and every every yoga teacher is going to have their specialty or their relationship with the body and what it can do and so 
and just take it in and listen to what resonates and let go of the rest. And I'll always be mindful of your own body and of your person receiving where they're at. So now that I've opened up her back, I'm just going to work into her neck and scalp. And just for a little add-on, a little extra, I encourage you to choose an essential oil that speaks to you when you smell it. And I also encourage you to try ones that you don't necessarily like right away. Because if you research them, sometimes the ones that you're not attracted to are actually the ones that you need. I'm going to use a really gentle oil because I'm going to use it right directly on her skin. So I will choose a very light oil. And this one is called Ylang Ylang. We worked with this the other day and I work with it not super often, but I think it's a really lovely oil to work with during the springtime because its essence is so floral and nostalgic. It's also antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic. It's got all these properties that are very helpful. And with my own practice and myself, I like to apply just a couple drops into the area around the spine. I think the delivery system is fast. And you can choose when you want to integrate these oils. Maybe it's something you do right at the, the beginning, or perhaps it's something you do at the end to kind of draw that session out. And oftentimes, people I work with, they'll go out into their day and they'll just radiate whatever oil I've used on them. And most people are very deficient, so I think most often times it's a, a really lovely, natural helper for us. And people will oftentimes say, oh my gosh, you smell so good, what is that? Because they don't have much experience with essential oils. And some people have a lot, and they'll know right away, and they'll like to talk about it. So Ilang Ilang is romantic, it's floral, it's um, nostalgic, it's warm. It's very, very good in a bath, just one or two drops, and you're in la-la land if you like taking baths or soaking your feet. We have a very happy and relaxed puppy who is snoring. I wish we had a little mic pack on her if it was comfortable because her little relaxed snorts are so adorable. Thank you so much for joining us today and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day. Introducing Yoga Plus. Offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.